Welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 20 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss preventing unintended updates in MVC. Please watch part 19 before proceeding with this video. If you remember, in part 19, we have made this name field a read-only field. And we also discussed how easy it was to use tools like Fiddler to create a POST request and then we have changed the name property of the employee within that POST request. And once we submitted that POST request to the server using Fiddler, we were able to very easily change the name of the employee in spite of it being a read-only field. And that was happening because of the way we implemented this edit controller action method. In this video, we will discuss how to prevent these type of unintended updates. I am going to make a few changes to this edit controller action method. The first change that I am going to make is instead of passing this employee object as a parameter, I am going to pass the ID of the employee that we are going to edit. Okay, And then the next change is I am going to move this line from there to here. So we have this employee business layer object and this object has got employees property which is going to list all the employees and out of that list I want that single employee whose ID matches with the ID that we are passing into this function. Okay, So this is going to return an employee object back the employee that we are editing. So I'm going to store in a variable of type employee. And then I'm going to use this update model function. Now we discussed about update model and try update model in the previous sessions in our MVC video series. Okay, So update model and I'm going to pass employee object. So what is this function going to do for us? It's going to inspect all the posted form values and going to populate the properties of the employee object automatically using those posted form values. Okay. Now I'm passing this employee object to save employee method, uh, which is going to save the state of the employee to the database table, and we re we are redirecting to the index action. But then. Even with this code, we will continue to have the same problem. Why is that? Because if the posted form contains you know, data for name property, it is going to use that and bind the employee object. So in the previous session, we used Fiddler to generate that post request. And then in that request, if I change the name of the employee and then post it to the server, you know, this default model binder will automatically populate that changed value with the name property of the employee object and we are passing it to the save employee method. So it's it's gonna you know change the name of the employee again. So we will continue to have that problem. Okay. But then what we can do here is there is another overloaded version. If you look at this update model, it has got several overloaded versions. Look at that. We have 10 overloaded versions. I'm going to use one of the overloaded versions where we can specify explicitly the properties that we want to include in model binding. Okay, so this employee object has got several properties, ID, name, gender, city, date of birth. Out of these properties, you know, I only want ID, gender, city, and date of birth to be binded, to be model binded, meaning whatever, uh, you know, whatever the user posts using that form, we don't really care. We are only interested in ID, gender, city, and date of birth properties. We don't want name to be included in model binding. Okay, and look at that. It's a string array. So I'm going to specify that here, the properties that I want to include in model binding. So this is the overloaded version we are using. Uh, since it's a string array, I'm going to create a new string array. And then I'm simply going to specify my properties here. And just to speed things up, I have these properties already typed. It's a comma separated list. It's a string array. So ID, gender, city, and date of birth. Okay, now even if your posted form contains a value for the name property, it will not be included in model binding, meaning that value from the posted form uh, will not be used to update the name property of the employee object. Since we are loading this employee object from the database, it continue to have that old value. And then only ID, gender, city, and date of birth will be updated from the posted form values. And we will be, uh, you know, we pass that employee object to save employee and that gets saved. Let's run this and see if it works in the first place. 
Okay, and another thing to keep in mind, look at this, I have an error here. It says that, you know, you have, there is already a member called edit with same parameter types. Now, if you look at our employee controller, there are two controller action methods with the same name. You know, this edit controller action method, since it's decorated with HTTP GET, it's going to respond to the GET request, whereas this one is going to respond to the POST request. But then if, as these methods have the same name and same number and type of parameters, you know, we will have that compilation error. To fix that, I'm going to change the name of this method to edit underscore post. But then the moment we do that, you know, we will not be able to respond to the post request on this URL. Okay, so to make this controller action method to respond to the post request of that URL, I'm going to decorate this with action name attribute and specify the action name as edit. With that change, let's go ahead and run this and see if the update works as expected. So I'm going to navigate to employee and index action. Let's click edit. Let's change the gender of this XYZ employee to female. Let's save that so it works as expected. Now let's fire up Fiddler. Okay, so it's asking me there's a new version there. Uh, for now, I'm going to click on No. Let's select all these requests, delete them. Let's go back to our server. Um, I mean, click Edit, and then let's click on Save so that a post request will be generated. So this is the post request and then I'm going to go onto the composer tab, drag and drop this post request onto the composer tab. So here we have that post request. Now look at that. Name is XYZ. Let me change name to ABC from XYZ and I'm going to change gender from female to male, city from London to Chennai. Okay, so we have changed name from XYZ to ABC, gender from female to male, city from London to Chennai. Now let's go ahead and execute this query. Now before that, let's actually check the data of that employee. So XYZ female London. Let me click this execute button. Okay, so that got executed. Now let's go back to the database, execute that, look at that. The name of the employee has not changed but I was able to change the gender and Chennai. So even using tools like Fiddler, I wasn't able to change the read-only field. And why is that? Because we have explicitly specified what properties we want to include in model binding. Okay, and this list is also called as white list or a black list. This is a very common interview question as well. Uh, you know, they can ask you, how do you prevent, you know, properties from being binded automatically? You can use include and exclude list. This is an example of include list. It is also possible to exclude, you know, uh, in this employee object, we have got total five parameters, ID, name, gender, city, and date of birth. Out of them, I want to exclude just name property. Okay, so if you want to specify an exclude list, you can do that as well instead of using include list. And if you want to specify an exclude list, I can use this version of update model, look at that, which is going to take the model object. And then there is another parameter called prefix, include par properties, and exclude properties. Uh, let's actually do that practically. Let's flip uh, to Visual Studio. So here we are using the include list. Instead of that, I'm going to use another overloaded version. Look at that, there is another overloaded version where we can specify, look at this version. Here I am passing the employee object and the next parameter is uh, a string parameter of type, uh, you know, a prefix parameter. The next one is include properties. I'm going to pass null for these two parameters. And finally, we can specify exclude properties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify null there and null there. And, you know, obviously I'm going to use this overloaded version. You know, this list now is going to act, act as an exclude list. And instead of specifying ID, gender, city, date of birth, I'm going to specify I want to exclude name property from model binding. So it's going to include all the other properties except name property. So with this change, it should still continue to work in the same way as it did before. All right. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.